Welcome, welcome to this uh, participatory lab on exploring how innovation in location services and data ecosystem can help transform your city uh, and region. My name is uh, Sven Schade and I'm working for the European Commission's Joint Research Center, the JRC, as a scientific lead on digital governance. Uh, and you will learn about some of our work uh, in this session. Uh, as you see on the next slides, uh, for the next uh, one and a half hours, we will basically uh, engage you in uh, our work on interoperability, digital transformation and location data with a particular focus on the local and the regional uh, level. Uh, this activity is part of uh, the ELISA action, which is on European location interoperability for e-government government, and uh, it's embedded into the ISA Square program of the European Commission and the member states. So this entire session will be all about interoperable solutions for e-government, which with the strong geospatial flavor. In terms of the agenda, you see on the next slide, uh, we will dive into the regional and the local level, and we really hear about two different journeys uh, which are implemented by, by contractors working with us. Uh, you will get an introduction to both journeys before we then will have two different breakout sessions uh, and you will be uh, able to engage more closely in one of the two, learn lessons and uh, share your thinking about the topic. We will then come back to a, to a joint session towards the end of, uh, of today to report from uh, what we learned from both journeys and a few concluding remarks. Before we go ahead, I will just lose uh, uh, two more words on the actual rules of today on the next slide. This is basically uh, to remind us all to please stay on listening mode only. So be uh, aware, be uh, uh, up, to, uh, up to speed, but please don't uh, Mute, unmute your microphone unless you're, you're making an intervention in the breakout groups. Um, and uh, feel free to share the camera when you are speaking, if possible. Um, basically, that is all from my side. Uh, with this, I hand over to my colleague Alexander Kotsev, uh, which will uh, give you a few more words on the context for this session. Thank you very much and enjoy uh, this one and a half hours with us. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Sven. Dear colleagues, a warm welcome from me as well. Uh, allow me to very briefly elaborate uh, with only two slides on the policy and scientific uh, context uh, for what we're going to be discussing uh, today uh, in the participatory lab. First of all, from a policy uh, perspective, uh, uh, we have uh, on the European level a really forward-looking policy agenda. Uh, as uh, you all know, one of the six priorities of the European Commission is the Europe Fit for the Digital Age priority, which really creates uh, a really ambitious legal framework uh, for AI, for digital transformation, for leveraging on the opportunities uh, uh, from a better use of uh, uh, data. Uh, at the same time, COVID, which we all hope uh, is uh, already behind us with the pandemic to the large extent, creates an excellent opportunity opportunity for us. Uh, all of these uh, prominent policy uh, initiatives on the European level are also backed up with unprecedented financial resource uh, by the Recovery and Resilience Facility, uh, by the Digital Europe uh, uh, program, by, by Horizon, and uh, overall by the multi-annual financial uh, framework. Uh, same initiatives we see converging also on the city level, on the uh, national level, so uh, it is in the shared interest uh, to, to make the most out of uh, the digital transformation and uh, data in Europe. Uh, in the next slide, uh, I would like to uh, mention very quickly the scientific context, because there are uh, challenges uh, that do not allow us, uh, from where we stand right now, to fully uh, benefit from the opportunities uh, that are created. First of all, looking into data, which is uh, an essential 
instrument for digital transformation. What we see is that there are new actors, uh, namely citizens, uh, private companies, data intermediaries. The data market will only be complete if all of those actors uh, uh, work together and if we can combine the data from all of them. Then technology is developing at a really uh, fast pace, but uh, uh, legislation is not. So we really need to see uh, how we can uh, bridge uh, that gap. We see a lot of linear versus agile uh, approaches. Nowadays, a lot more approaches have to be agile in order to be able to quickly adapt to change. And then looking in particular into cities and regions, we need to go one step beyond open data. Open data is important. It has brought a lot of novelty uh, to our cities and regions, but there is a lot of data that is still, uh, uh, that cannot uh, uh, be uh, open. So we need to see how to uh, address this. Uh, uh, overall, uh, the European data landscape is still fragmented, which does not allow us to uh, benefit from the opportunities, which all combined means we need scientific evidence on how to sustain and scale uh, data and technological innovation. And here come our next, uh, uh, on the next slide, our uh, two uh, journeys that were prepared by, uh, by the two uh, contractors that work with the Joint Research Center. They will be uh, described in a bit, in a little bit more detail, but uh, just allow me to anticipate. Journey one will uh, uh, be looking into the opportunities for leveraging the power of location information and technologies uh, to improve public services at local level and the way in which this is approached is on an EU-wide uh, uh, scale. Uh, in a very different manner, uh, uh, Journey 2 looks into regional and local data-driven innovation through co collective intelligence and sandboxing uh, by looking into very uh, concrete, uh, uh, distinct uh, uh, cases in European uh, cities. With that, uh, I would like uh, uh, to hand it over uh, to um, our colleague Danny van den Broek from KU Leuven, who will uh, introduce uh, the first uh, journey. Over to you, Danny. Uh, thank you, Alex. Um, so we'll briefly uh, introduce this journey. Uh, it's a separate project on the innovative use of location data and technologies to improve public services. So we have several key milestones in the study. Uh, one is already finished. It was a desktop study, but also uh, we conducted a survey and we conducted uh, interviews to collect information on different cases where location data and technologies are used in Europe at the local and regional level. So by the way, this report has been published very recently, I think last week. So on the ISA Square website, you can find the report. And if necessary, we will also in the breakout session uh, provide the direct link to it. Uh, in the second uh, step, we develop a conceptual framework, uh, not only for studying uh, cases, uh, but also for assessing impacts and especially focusing on public value of uh, location-enabled uh, uh, public services. Uh, that's ongoing work. Uh, and then we will zoom in on 10 case studies. Uh, we will document more, but we'll have uh, some more time to really work with the public authorities and all the stakeholders involved in 10 cases where we will apply the conceptual framework and then we will fine tune the framework, of course, based on our findings. And then we will have a validation and consultation phase that should uh, finally result in recommendations, but also in ideas for future uh, research. Next slide. Uh, so uh, what we will do is to provide some examples of case studies without going into details because we only have one hour in the breakout session, uh, but we are collecting currently and identifying and selecting uh, 10 regions or local authorities uh, which use uh, location data and technologies. Uh, some are given here as examples. Uh, the Comuni Chiamo is not a, a municipality, which I understood wrongly before, but is a, a private company that is working for different municipalities and cities. And it is the founder and professor at the University of Bologna that will present how it is implemented. Some solutions are implemented in some municipalities in Italy. And then the second uh, person we invited is Maria Cabello from Tracasa uh, of the region of Navarra in Spain. 
uh, who will tell us more at the regional level how uh, location data technologies are used. Now, in the next slide, you will see our journey. Uh, there are different steps in it. Uh, yes, go ahead. Um, yeah, the different steps are, okay. First step is we want to know who you are, who is in the room. In the second step, uh, we will zoom in on two examples that will be presented as we said before. Uh, to give you a flavor and idea of what it can be. In the third step, uh, we want your input. So we will use 30 minutes of the hour to uh, discuss a few questions uh, on replicability, on the challenges you see, but also what's your opinion on value created by such examples. And maybe you have some other ideas. And the final step is then uh, also, if you have some ideas of similar cases or other cases in your own municipality region, organization or whatever, uh, then we are uh, very pleased to know them. And with that, I hand over uh, to Giovanna. Hello and uh, welcome everyone. <laughs> Many thanks to the GRC team to, for the introduction and to Danny for presenting the first journey. Um, I'm glad to introduce the second journey you can take today, hoping that many of you will join us. Um, in a nutshell, what is our journey about? First of all, uh, you'll have the opportunity to explore uh, how the data ecosystem of leading European cities uh, work, what are their enabling factors, what are their key challenges. Second, we are also going to present and discuss a so-called sandboxing methodology, which cities are using to test innovative solutions, both from a technical and a governance perspective. Uh, we at, at Intellera, um, former PwC public sector, together with Open and Agile Smart Cities, uh, Open Evidence and Technopolis Group, uh, are cooperating with, uh, with the GRC on the analysis of a data ecosystem in seven European cities, supporting four of them in the experimentation of innovative solutions to strengthen their data ecosystem. Our study will also identify and share lessons learned and provide recommendations for researchers and policymakers. Um, before we start, what is a, a data ecosystem? Uh, well, by that ecosystem, we mean a complex social and technical system which involves the interaction of people, organizations, technology and policies with regards to the use, the use and sharing of data for a specific uh, purpose. Such interaction happen through co coordination mechanism among public administration, private actors and citizens. This mechanism evolve and adapt in a city environment through data creation, data sharing, and generation of new product, service, or knowledge, uh, which in turn produce new data feeding back into the ecosystem. Uh, in the first part of our journey, we are going to present you some first results of our study by exploring the data ecosystems of seven European cities. We're going to present their key strengths and weaknesses, and we'll be glad to discuss with you opportunities and challenges of that ecosystem from your own perspective. In the second part, we'll discuss how testing innovative solutions through sandboxing can help improve the functioning of ecosystem and enable a more efficient and effective reuse of data to inform policy decisions. The participatory lab today is an important moment for discussing and sharing the lessons we are learning from different local ecosystems in Europe. Uh, as anticipated, as you can see in this slide, our study is centered on cities, but which are the cities? We managed to have a good mix of uh, 10 large and small cities with a balanced geographical representation uh, of the EU. Not all the cities uh, are involved in all the activities. We have analyzed the data ecosystem developed in Barcelona, Bordeaux, Helsinki, Milan, Poznan, Rome, and Santander. And we are now supporting four of them, uh, Barcelona, Helsinki, Milan, and Poznan, uh, to test innovative solutions through sandboxing. Uh, we are then going to involve the last three cities, Amsterdam, Ghent, and Sofia, for the validation of results. 
uh, in our journey, you'll have the opportunity to hear directly from two cities, from uh, Timo uh, Ruomaki uh, from Forum Vidium Helsinki and Marco Lombardi um, from the Urban Digital Ecosystem Office in Milan. With these two cities, we're going to share and discuss how the main challenges in use of data are being addressed to sandboxing. Next slide. Finally, let me recap what you'll find in your, in your journey. We are going to discuss with you what is meant by that ecosystem and how seven cities, European cities have shaped their ecosystem. Then, starting from the experiences of Helsinki and Milan, we are going to discuss and collect your thoughts about the opportunity of implementing a sandboxing methodology in a local context with the aim of exploring new solutions or governance approaches for a data-driven policy making. Uh, I look forward to seeing you in journey two, uh, where my colleague Cornelia Dinka from um, OAS, Open and Agile Smart Cities, will guide us through all the participator activities. And uh, now let me give the floor back to Alex, who will guide us in your choice of the breakout session. Thanks for, uh, thanks. Thanks to you, Giovanna. So, uh, as was mentioned, uh, uh, now, now is uh, the time to choose one of the two uh, breakout sessions. I know that they are both interesting uh, and you are tempted to join two, but then you have to make a choice. Uh, unless you have, uh, together with you here, your digital twin, you would need to choose either journey one uh, or journey two. Uh, in order to do that, uh, the button for the breakout rooms uh, just appeared uh, in your Zoom. Uh, if you uh, look at, within the interface uh, in the bottom of the screen, there is a breakout rooms button. Uh, wh when you click uh, that one, uh, you uh, can already join one of the two uh, journeys. Uh, enjoy, uh, make uh, the, the full uh, benefit from this opportunity and we're looking forward uh, to uh, the debriefing and the plenary after the journeys. Thank you.